Welcome back to another episode of The Empowered Artist. It's great to have you here, beautiful souls. I love this episode because it shows us that we have to create our art the same way we have to market our art. We all want to create authentically, and we all want to make art with depth that tells a story. We create in solitude, yet we want to build connection to our audience and to the world. Welcome to The Empowered Artist Podcast where you will get all the strategy to sell your art online. I'm Jenna Webb. I've turned over 750 artists into artpreneurs. I'm an artist, marketing expert, coach, founder of Artpreneur Academy, chronic illness warrior, and your new art business, Bessie. When I retired from corporate to live my dream life as an artist, there was no example for me to follow. But as I started to grow a six-figure art business, I was able to map out a complete step-by-step blueprint for successfully creating and marketing online art businesses. If I can learn how to be an artist in my 30s, I can teach you how to run a business now. As the how-to girl, I'll give you the tips and tricks that will actually grow your art business. So tune in each week as we simplify art marketing, make selling your work fun, and elevate your artpreneur mindset so that you feel like the badass artist that you are, even on the tough days. I am on a mission to transform the mindset and income of artists everywhere. So if you're ready to live your dream life as a full-time artist, let's do the damn thing. We bear our soul in the creative process no matter what result, but we hope it lands with the recipient of our art and hits them as profoundly as it hits us, creating a deep well of emotion, inspiration, and vulnerability. The way we create our art is the same way we have to market our art. Who better to examine their creative approach than Bruce Springsteen, aptly named the boss of rock and roll. Bruce is one of the most prolific songwriters and known for creating songs that resonate with his audience because they are profoundly deep and authentic. Because of that unique gift, it's no surprise that Bruce is one of the top Grammy winners of all time with 20 Grammys. So let's take advice from the boss today. Or just listen because he's a cool-ass guy with a big heart. And writing music is a lot like creating visual art like we do. So how does Bruce do it? Today, I'll share with you six secrets to creativity and Bruce Springsteen's approach to songwriting. Now, you don't have to be a super fan or even familiar with his work to understand the big takeaways today that will help you not only create your artwork, but market your artwork too. I'm going to spell it all out for you. I draw such big metaphors from the music industry to my business. Everything from the creative process of music writing one lyric, to composing a whole song, to producing an album, just like a brushstroke to a painting, to an entire art collection. Then the marketing of the art, the artists, and the entire career, watching them evolve and pivot. There's so many similarities between visual artists and musicians. Let's dive into the six ways that Bruce Springsteen approaches songwriting that connects with his audience so authentically. Number one, drawing from personal experiences. Springsteen's music is often inspired by his own life and the world around him. He writes about working class imagery, unfulfilled dreams, parental conflict, troubled relationships, drawing from his own encounters and observation. He's simply writing what he knows and telling you what he thinks about it, letting you into his world. Talk about vulnerability. Number two, Bruce keeps it real. Springsteen emphasizes the importance of writing about what you know. He encourages aspiring songwriters to look around themselves and write about what they see and who they see. Number three, using storytelling techniques. Bruce is known for his storytelling approach to songwriting, He weaves vivid narratives of cinematic imagery into his lyrics, creating songs that are rich in storytelling. That's just like a painting. That's just like your artist statement. That's just like the captions you write on Instagram. To market your artwork, you have to create connection with your audience. And that's what my Instagram workshop is all about. One of the most important marketing tools in my art business journey has been Instagram. 
It's my number one tool for creating connection with ideal clients online and converting them to high ticket buyers. If you're looking for a simple step-by-step plan to build your art business on Instagram, definitely check out my Instagram workshop. Inside, you'll learn how to post on Instagram with purpose and build a deep connection with your ideal client. You'll learn all the key ingredients to attract your ideal client online, specific caption prompts to post with purpose, how to use calls to action to boost engagement, key elements your post should have, how to strategically use hashtags to increase your visibility, plus a 15-point checklist to audit your Instagram as if I was sitting there and doing it with you. It's the playbook I wish I had when I started out on Instagram and how I've sold a lot of artwork to strangers online. So if you're looking to build an Instagram account that attracts your ideal client and markets your artwork in a very authentic way, you have to check out my Instagram workshop. Visit jennawebart.com slash Instagram or click the link in the show notes to get access to my Instagram workshop now for one and a half times less the total value. The fourth secret to Bruce's very authentic songwriting approach that connects with his ideal audience is jotting down ideas. What he'll do is jot down ideas in a notebook and refer to them later when piecing songs together. That allows him to capture moments of inspiration and build upon them during the songwriting process. I think we all know how that feels. We have a million ideas swimming around and they come to us in inopportune moments like the shower or when we're driving. We get ideas for our creative process. So having a running list is such a great idea to do this. And whether you do that in your sketchbook or in your phone, that is a great way of going about it. Number five, showing rather than telling. So in his songs, he shows rather than tells by creating a visual and emotional experience for his listeners, using the lyrics to show rather than simply tell. Paintings and sculptures and photography do the same thing. They tell a story, but sometimes we actually have to put this together in words. What I get from this is we know that songwriters use a lot of metaphors to show rather than simply tell. And metaphors leave things open to interpretation, just like an abstract painting. But one way that you can market your art and help people connect to you is give the metaphor or tell your audience what that painting means to you or what it was inspired by. And it's okay to leave a little mystery, but always tie that piece of artwork back to your purpose. Which brings me to the last secret from Bruce and his songwriting approach is number six, writing with a purpose. Bruce believes in the importance of having a consistent thought, purpose, and action in songwriting. He emphasizes the need for sustained effort and dedication over a long period of time to connect and sustain an audience. To sum it up, Bruce's approach to songwriting is exactly the approach I teach in the Artpreneur Academy to market your artwork authentically. It always comes back to purpose. Bruce draws from personal experiences, keeps it real, use storytelling techniques, and writes with a purpose. These are the elements that contribute to the depth and authenticity of his music, and this is why his audience connects, and this is why he is the biggest, one of the biggest Grammy winners of all time. His art might come in a dif- different format than ours, but we have a lot to learn from it. If you've been listening to me for a little bit, you know that I am a huge fan of classic rock. I'm a huge fan of music. I actually grew up listening to Bruce Springsteen. And when I outlined this episode originally, I was stoked because I was going to see him twice this month in September. And by the time I sat down to record it, guys, I was kind of soul crushed because Bruce had to cancel his September leg of his concert. I had fourth row center tickets fourth row center stage tickets to see him in Baltimore. The concert got canceled two days before we were going because Bruce had a peptic ulcer and he also canceled the 
other concert we were going to at the end of the month. Needless to say, I was freaking bummed because I was about to check that off my bucket list. This legend is a human, and I'm just hoping that he is feeling well. You got to put your body first. Here's one cool ass thing to hear about this artist. Bruce is 100% not touring for the money. He sold his entire catalog for $500 million. That is half a billion dollars, folks. Neil Young sold his for, I think, $100 million. And Bruce is still going on to tour, and he does three-hour sets. I mean, that is a ridiculously long concert set, a three-hour set. He loves his fans. Let's all send Bruce well wishes and healing vibes. I hope you got some great gems for not only creating your art today, but also with marketing your art today. If you want to learn how to market your artwork with purpose, come and check out Artpreneur Academy. The link is in the show notes, jennawebart.com slash artpreneuracademy. I am so grateful to have you guys listening. We are at 71 Apple Podcast Reviews, and I would love to give away some beats before this hot podcast summer comes to an end. We are really drawing out the summer just so I can give out these prizes. So go ahead and follow the show and leave a review. I love it when you guys tag me online and share the show. It means so much. Go out there and have a great week. I love you guys so much. I'll see you right here next week. 